So hi everyone and welcome to this video on the Bertrand oligopoly. Uh, in particular, we're going to discuss uh, an example of this uh, sort of phenomenon and we're going to use calculus to do that. And if you notice, we have here a problem and uh, this problem is actually quite similar to the problem that we had in the Curnot oligopoly. And I hope with this example, you're able to see how the Curnot and the Bertrand case sort of differ in terms of their results. So in this case, two firms face an inverse demand uh, function equal to this one. Okay, so this is our, our inverse demand function. And uh, we have here Q, wherein Q is just the sum of the output supplied by two firms. So this is a duopoly case. So that's Q1 plus Q2. And we notice that each firm has a very similar cost structure. Now, we're also going to further assume that uh, the firms act independently of each other. So they act independently and that they choose their prices according to the Bertrand model. Okay, so we're going to assume those things and we're asked to find the Bertrand equilibrium output and price of each firm. And uh, we're going to find the total profit of each firm. Now, in theory, we actually already know the answers to A and B. A being equal to marginal cost and B being equal to zero for, uh, for this case because, again, uh, the firms are pricing it equal to marginal cost. So if we have that one here, okay, uh, we're going to have a, uh, a sort of an easy time with it by just applying our theory. So uh, for letter A, okay, in order for us to find the equilibrium output price, uh, of each firm, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to compute for marginal cost because we know that it's going to be equal to that marginal cost because we know that at the, Bertrand, um, at the Bertrand equilibrium, so at the Bertrand equilibrium, okay, uh, the proper condition is that P1 is equal to P2 is equal to M, which is your marginal cost, assuming that we have a homogeneous good case. And uh, to do that, we need marginal cost. So we have MC, which is equal to DC1 over DQ1, okay, or which is also equal to DC2 over DQ2. And if we take the derivative of this one or this one, we get 40. Therefore, the price that the firm will charge uh, for each unit of the good is equal to 40. Then uh, to get Q, we can just substitute that in the demand equation. So we have 40 equal to 100 minus 0 0.01 Q. Then uh, we can get um, negative 60 equal to negative 0 0.01 Q. Divide both sides by negative 0 0.01. Then we get Q is equal to 6,000. So there will be um, 6,000 uh, as the market uh, total uh, market demand that is out there. Then, since the prices are the same, right? Since we have a case wherein both firms charge the same, then they will split the market demand. So each firm, each firm uh, supplies, okay, supplies QI, which is equal to Q, divided by n, which is the number of firms, that's 2. So that's 6,000 divided by 2. So each firm will supply 3,000 units for all i is equal to 1 and then 2, right? Then for b, we can find the profit, right, by just uh, simply doing, uh, by plugging all that we have. So profit is equal to revenue minus cost, so profit of a specific firm revenue of a specific firm, then cost of a specific firm. This is equal to P, I, uh, P times Q, I minus 40 Q, I. So notice we have this cost, right? Then we know that P, whether firm 1 or firm 2, that's 40 times uh, Q, I. That's going to be, um, that's going to be 3,000 minus uh, 40 times 3,000 which we get to an economic profit of zero, which makes sense according for our case because, again, as we said, the um, if firms price it at marginal cost, then the economic profit should be equal to zero. And that illustrates that under this Bertrand oligopoly, under homogeneous products, 
we reach uh, the societal uh, welfare maximum in the case that is very similar to a perfectly competitive market. So that's our example on the Bertrand oligopoly. In the next video, we'll discuss the Stackelberg um, model, which is again a criticism of the Cournot oligopoly model in which we try to integrate information asymmetries. So I'll see you in the next video and thank you for your attention.